Good afternoon and welcome to Fox News Sunday. We continue our series Choosing the President now with the Democratic frontrunner, Senator Hillary Clinton, who joins us from her home in Chappaqua, New York. And Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Well, it's great to be back, Chris. Thank you. Senator, in an interesting bit of karma, we are talking on the first uh, anniversary of my interview with your husband, and I would like to show you a clip from that interview. Here it is. You did Fox's bidding on this show. You did your nice little conservative hit job on me. Senator, talk about conservative hit jobs, right-wing conspiracies. Why do you and the president have such a hyper-partisan view of politics? <laughs> Well, Chris, if you had uh, walked even a day in our shoes over the last 15 years, I'm sure you'd understand. But, you know, the real goal for our country right now is to get beyond uh, partisanship. And uh, I'm sure trying to do my part because we've got a lot of serious problems that uh, we're trying to deal with. This week, I rolled out my American Health Choices Plan. I'm going to work very hard to travel around the country, talk about why we need to tackle quality, affordable health care for every American. We've got to deal with the economy and some of the problems that people are facing uh, in the mortgage market and the fact that a lot of people are not getting ahead. Uh, in the last six years, the average family income has dropped $1,000. That's not good news for uh, our economy or for real hardworking people. So what I'm focused on is coming forth with ideas that I believe are in the best interests of our country and clearly around the world. We've got to restore America's leadership. That starts with ending the war in Iraq and bringing our troops home, but there's a lot more to do. And I think it would be great if we had a debate uh, on the substance that we really talked about what each of us will bring uh, to the White House, uh, because I'm excited by what I hear as I travel around America. I think people are ready to start acting like Americans again. They want to roll up their sleeves. They want to tackle these tough problems. And I believe we can. And I'm confident and optimistic that we can make progress together again starting January 20th, 2009. Senator, I, I want to talk about health care in a moment. But, but this is a, a question that one of your Democratic competitors, Barack Obama, uh, mentions in criticism of you. You talk a lot about taking on the right wing in your campaign. Let's watch. For 15 years, I have stood up against the right-wing machine, and I've come out stronger. So if you want a winner who knows how to take them on, I'm your girl. Question, why do we want another president who thinks so much in terms of right versus left and red state versus blue state? Well, if you look at what I've done in New York, Chris, um, I won re-election with nearly 67% of the vote carrying a lot of the same counties uh, that uh, George Bush had carried uh, just uh, two years before. I've been able to get a lot of Republican and independent support in this campaign. I know how to seek and find common ground, but I also know how to stand my ground. You know, I'm not intimidated by all of the efforts to try to undermine what I think is right for the country or to come after me or Democrats personally, because I think we need to try to get back to the center. And I don't think that uh, it's in the best interest of our country uh, that people try to pull the debate off of uh, what I believe is important, and that is coming to some resolution about these problems that are not getting better. We now have more uninsured Americans than we did before. Sen Senator, can I we have a lot of hard Senator, working Americans who have given up looking for work. Let me ask you about health care. Yeah, because I'd love you did, for you to ask did me about health care. <laughs> you, you did come up with a new plan this week, which you say would uh, ensure I the did. 47 million Americans who are uninsured. And let's talk about how you would pay for it. Uh, you say that uh, you'd get $52 billion from repealing the Bush tax cuts for the wealthy and $77 billion from making the system more efficient. Senator, uh, saying you're going to save billions from waste and fraud is an old technique. I covered uh, Ronald Reagan back in 1980 who talked about doing it that way and we ended up with huge deficits. If you are unable to, to get those savings from waste and fraud and abuse, would you raise taxes further or would you cut your program? Well, Chris, let me first describe the program. The American Health Choices Plan does not create any new bureaucracy. It is not government-run health care. If you are satisfied with your health care, you keep it, no questions asked. 
But if you are one of those 47 million uninsured, or if you are one of the many millions more who actually have insurance, except when you really need it and the insurance company won't pay for what your doctor has prescribed, you will now have the same choices that are available to members of Congress. Because we will open up the plan that members of Congress have and give you a health choices menu to choose from. We will also provide uh, a health care tax credit for those who cannot on their own afford it or who don't have employer help. Similarly, I will provide a new small business health care tax credit because a lot of small businesses tell me that they'd love to be able to help provide health care for their employees, but they just can't afford it, and we're going to make it affordable. But in our system, we have a lot of inefficiencies. Uh, let's take electronic medical records, because if we were to have a system where everyone had a private, confidential health care record, this is something that I've worked on with Newt Gingrich, uh, we would see that uh, we would save a lot of money. It's been estimated by not me, but uh, the others who have studied this, about $77 billion a year. If we better managed chronic care, we would save money because right now we don't, and we pay a big price for it. So there are a lot of cost savings, and let me just correct you for a minute. My plan has about $52 billion in uh, tax uh, cuts because of what we're doing uh, by moving the tax uh, uh, rates back to the pre-Bush era, uh, and yes, taxes will go up on people making $250,000, but most Americans will see a net tax decrease, and we have about uh, $55 billion in savings from uh, electronic medical records, chronic care management, uh, taking away some of the overpayments Senator? to HMOs that have unfortunately driven up the cost of the Medicare prescription drug benefit, S Senator, and if people I want to see how I will both, how I will both get health care and and how I will move toward fiscal responsibility, please go to my website, HillaryClinton.com, because we talk about how we will pay for all of the initiatives that I am proposing in this campaign. I take fiscal responsibility very seriously. I regret deeply that President Bush threw out uh, fiscal responsibility over the last six and a half years. And under my administration, we will move back toward fiscal responsibility. Senator, you talk, as you just did, a lot about choice in your plan, but the fact is you still have sweeping government mandates, and let's take a look at those. Uh, you mandate that all Americans would have to buy insurance or face penalties, even young people who may not want it. You mandate that large businesses would have to insure employees or pay a tax. According to a top Harvard economist, 200,000 people would end up losing their jobs because of that. And you mandate that insurance companies would have to offer coverage to all applicants, no matter how sick they are. So, Senator, isn't there still a good deal of government coercion in your plan? Well, there is certainly a shared responsibility that goes with having a health care system that both can afford to provide quality, affordable health care for everyone and puts responsibility on everyone in our country. Uh, individuals will have to have insurance, but we're going to make it affordable. Uh, the health care industry, the drug industry, are going to have to change the way they conduct business. Right now, uh, the way that they do has driven up costs and, unfortunately, lowered choices for many millions of Americans. Business will take responsibility, but within a system that will actually get their costs down. And we have, you know, reams of evidence and lots of experts lined up to say just that. In fact, most of the independent uh, experts who've looked at my plan over the last week uh, have been very favorably uh, disposed toward. It. But the most important thing is uh, we cannot continue down this path. It is a moral imperative that we provide health insurance for the 47 million uninsured Americans, including the 9 million. The president's response is when we try to extend insurance to children to say he will veto that. I don't think that's a majority opinion in our country. And we also know that we have to deal with this economically because we can't continue to increase the amount of money we spend on health care. We frankly don't get uh, the best results for all the money that we spend, and we lose jobs right now uh, to competition because we don't have a system that everyone shares responsibility in achieving quality, affordable health care for every American.